In this video, we are going to learn how to update files hosted on S3 automatically using the Python programming language and the library Bodo. So what we have done so far across a series of videos is first, we made a web page that could access a JSON file and use that JSON to update the page. Then we figured out how to upload that file to Amazon S3. And then finally, we learned how to change the cores configuration to make it so that anyone can access this file across the web programmatically. So remember, there are two different ways of accessing files. One is just by visiting the URL. The other one is having your web page visit it, which required that one little change. <coughs> so what we wanna do is we want to use Python to update this sample file.json because a really common use case for doing AWS work and for hosting files on S3 is I have a data visualization or some sort of information uh, run from my server. And what I want to have happen is I want the data to automatically update every hour, every day, every month, something like that. So what I do is I write a Python script that uploads sample file.json or whatever other file to the S3 bucket at a regular pace. And so then I don't have to update my whole website all the time. All I have to do is update this file and it will automatically load the correct file whenever I visit the page. Okay, so what we are gonna do is we are gonna use a library called Bodo. Now, the important thing is Bodo 3 is actually what we're using, not Bodo. So this, is the old one. This is the new one. So make sure you're using Bodo 3. The internet is not very clear about which one you should be using, so you might find yourself going down uh, the Bodo one instead of Bodo 3, but it's fine, it's fine. Okay, Bodo 3 is what we are interested in doing. Um, I wonder what happens if I just click Amazon S3. Examples, uploading files, <coughs> great. So here we are, we have all these, this def upload file, blah, blah, I don't care. I already made a sample file for us. What we're gonna do is I pulled it out of this code right here. What it does is it imports Bodo 3. You probably have to pip install Bodo 3. Uh, it connects to S3 and then it uploads the file. It uploads the file sample file.json into the bucket test uploading files. And then it says, please call this file when you upload it, sample file.json. You can change this if you want to rename it. Um, okay, I'm gonna run this file and I'm gonna get an error and then we're gonna walk through what's going on. Python upload.py, it's gonna yell at me and it says access key ID is not defined. So when we upload files to S3 programmatically, instead of just going through uh, the S3 management console like we did on the web a while ago, what we need to do is we need to give it an access key and a secret key. That's the way that we kind of prove we are who we are. It's not your Amazon username and password. It is something different. Uh, it's kind of hellish to set up, so bear with me here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our uh, AWS management console. We are gonna search for I A M and you're like, oh, why is it called I am? And like, oh, why not? Why not? Manage access to Amazon resources. So welcome to identity and access management. Great. This is it's horrifying. It's yelling at me about a lot of stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new user and we're gonna have that user be able to upload files to that one specific Amazon bucket, the bucket that we made. Uh, called test uploading files. We don't want it to touch any of our other S3 buckets. We don't want it to be able to, you know, or toilet paper from Amazon for us. We don't want it to be able to spin up servers or anything. We just want it to access S3 and be able to upload things to test uploading files. So uh, what we are going to do is we are gonna go under access management. We can go to users and we are going to add a new user up at the top here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it the name, the same as the bucket name, dash uploader, so I know what it is. 
uh, gonna scroll down, access type. We want programmatic access. So we wanna access key ID and a secret access key. Same thing as we're looking at right here. Um, AWS API, that's the application programming interface. CLI is the command line interface. SDK, <coughs> software development kit. Uh, I don't know why they're just trying to scare you with all those acronyms right there, but we just want programmatic access because we're programming and we want to access it. Next, permissions. So uh, what we want to do is, like I said before, we want this to access S3 and only this bucket here. So I'm gonna attach existing policies directly maybe. And then I'm gonna say create a policy. Do I wanna do any of these things? No, it's far too complicated. Just click create policy and we'll step through very, very custom style what we're going to do here. So what service am I interested in? I'm interested in S3. So yes, do S3. What actions do I want it to be able to do in S3? I'm gonna say everything, just let it do everything. Let it put in new files, list the files that are there, read files that are there, things like that. Maybe not permissions management. Eh, we're just gonna do it for the bucket, it's fine, it's fine. <coughs> All right, next up, resources. Now, access point. What access point do I want? And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Just all of them. Which bucket am I interested in? Oh, hey, I know which bucket I'm interested in. I'm interested in test uploading files. Test uploading files, add. Great. What job? I don't know. Sure. What object? Sure, all of them. When they say object, you think file. So which files do I want it to be able to edit? All of them, it's fine, it's fine. Um, we're kind of playing loose and fast with this, but in the end, this is just giving this user access to test uploading files to do whatever it wants. And that's fine by us because we're not putting anything else uh, in here. So review policy, and you're like, yeah, seems great. Uh, what am I gonna name it? I'm gonna call it test uploading files policy. And then I'll say, describe it as allow me to upload files to test uploading files. Click create policy. And then it dumps me back here. Now, the thing that we were in the middle of was creating a new user. The reason why we did this was to create a set of things that our user is able to do. So we're gonna have to go back to our tab here because when we clicked create policy, it opened up a new tab. There are a lot of policies here. If we search for test uploading files, it won't be there until we refresh. We refresh, there it is. We say, yeah, we would love for you to be able to do this. We click it, next, tags, don't need tags, review. Sure, that all seems great, create user. Great, we got an access key ID and a secret access key. I'm gonna copy my access key ID, paste it right here. I'm gonna take my secret access key, I'm gonna paste it right here. I'm gonna save this. <coughs> And now I'm gonna to try to run this code again. So run it again, it doesn't say anything and that's because it worked. How do you know it worked? Well, if we refresh this, it's, oh no, everything is terrible, everything is bad, access denied. What happens is, yes, it worked. Yes, it uploaded the file. But remember when we clicked all those things that said, Make everything public, make everything public, make everything public. When we upload the new file, it doesn't save that information. It tries to be secure, it tries to be good. So by default, it prevents you from looking at the file once it's been updated. So what we need to do is we need to add a little bit more code. Luckily, I stole this from the internet. So I'm gonna add extra args equals ACL public read. ACL means access control list. Allow the public to read the file. I'm gonna save this again. So now it's gonna upload samplefile.json. It's gonna put it in this bucket. It's gonna call it samplefile.json and it is going to allow the public to read it. So let's try this again. Run it, refresh. 
and then it downloads it to machine my machine but that's fine what i'm going to do is i'm going to change this to say this is a sample remote file save it run this to have it upload to the web and then i'm going to refresh index.html if we updated it correctly it will now say this is a sample remote file and there we go it magically works uh, when we updated the access control list the acl public read uh, that's separate from the cores policy that we also edited before the cores policy sticks to the bucket um, so once you enable the cores policy, you will never have to do that again for that bucket. Uh, but every single time you upload a file, if you want it to be able to be accessed by people on the web publicly, you're going to have to add this extra args thing here. So now you can take a HTML file, you can pull in some external JavaScript, uh, and then you can just uh, automatically update this, let's say with the cron job and send it over to AWS S3 to have it automatically update every hour, every day, and anything else. Congratulations on being all powerful.